Father, we lift up tonight's word and and we pray, mighty God, that that you open up our eyes and open up our hearts, mighty God, and, and praise God for all of the examples and role models, mighty God, that are uh, logging in, all of our the role models from uh, from Australia, mighty God. You've been showing me that a lot of people from Australia are checking out this podcast, mighty God. Uh, you've been opening up the doors for many people from India that are logging in and, and listening to this podcast. So we welcome all of our uh, new family from uh, Australia and all of our new family from India, mighty God, all of our people from the West Coast, all of our Native Americans, mighty God, and all of our indigenous people throughout the world, mighty God. I pray that that you give us a word, mighty God, especially for all members of the SOG crew, mighty God, that, that it would be very important, mighty God. Yes, mighty God, we've been training and we've been learning, mighty God, and you've been guiding us how to be examples Everywhere we go, mighty God, but Father, tonight, Lord, tonight, mighty God, we beg you, we we hunger, we're asking, seeking, and knocking, mighty God, for a word, mighty God, uh, how the kids see us, mighty God. I want my kids, my home, my wife, our team, our flock, our group, our squad, mighty God, tonight, I want them, mighty God, to be blessed, mighty God. The same way when we go preach at that church, mighty God, the same way we go preach at that conference, the same way we rock that revival, mighty God, the same way we do that SOG crew hip hop event, mighty God, and there's just a lot of crowds, mighty God, the same way that they're excited and blessed by our testimony, by our what they witness and experience, mighty God. I pray for our inner squad. When we go and eat, mighty God, when we go have pizza, mighty God, when we go to Golden Corral, mighty God, that it would be the most blessed experience, mighty God, that we come out like revival, mighty God, a revival atmosphere in our inner squad, mighty God. Let that be a time, mighty God, of refreshing, mighty God, not burdens, mighty God, not, not offended by each other, mighty God, but let the inner squad experience, mighty Mighty God, be a time of revival and blessings, mighty God. In the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, prepare your hearts. In the name of Jesus, prepare your hearts, my people. All of our people from Alaska, prepare your hearts. White River, Arizona, the Apache Nation, uh, all of our uh, all of our Navajos, all of our Athabascans, uh, all the rasa, all the all the hip hop heads, all the people from Australia, prepare your heart, Australia, India, prepare your heart, India, North America, prepare your heart in the name of Jesus for this word. Philippians chapter three, that's where we're going to start. Philippians chapter three, starting with verse 17, it says, brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk so you, so as you have us for an example. I hope you're hearing out there, Australia and India. It says the first thing, it says, brethren. What is what is a, a brethren? He's saying, brethren, fellow believers. I'm talking to my inner squad believers, brethren in Christ, my team, all the Christian Americans that are that are a part of SOG crew, the sons of God. All, all my associates, all those united together in a bond of affection. What is affection? I, I don't want to just have a team where we don't like each other. We talk about each other right when we leave the room. No, my team, our team is a team of love and we like each other and we love spending time with each other. We love breaking bread. There's a there's an anointing on the inner squad when we get together. We shouldn't be on the phone, guys. We shouldn't be talking. Hold on. I got another call. I got another call. I got another call. I got another call. No, let me turn this phone off because there's a power and an anointment on this inner meeting. I know there's only four of us, but I want the power. It only takes two. It only takes two or three. And Jesus is in the midst. So because there's two or three together in agreement, Jesus is Lord and he, I need miracles right now. I, I need an open heaven right now. I need my kids to have favor with God and man right now. I want my kids are crying out for work right now. I need, 
I, I need right now to have revival right now in the name of Jesus, Page Pete from Alaska. It says, brethren, be followers together. What does that mean? Be imitators. He's saying, the writer is saying, be imitators of, of me right now. I, I want to be an example to you. I want to be an example to my inner squad right now, Kenny Sochi. I want revival for you. Be imitators. We can't be on the phone. I don't want to go into the meeting of a couple people. I don't want to imitate getting on the phone. I want to. I want us to imitate us having revival, us loving each other in the name of Jesus copy my behavior. Do you see how I treat my woman? Do you see how I treat my children? Do you see how I like to tip? Do you see how I like to, 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 to say thank you to the waitresses? Do you see how my actions and my behavior is for one another? It says, brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk as so as you have us for an example, I want you to mark these guys, fix your eyes, guys, on this ensample, this pattern. I, I, I want you, Verna Bush and all of our uh, 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 Apaches, Miss Verna Bush, Scotty Baker from Curbside Community Center in Adelanto next to Victorville, fix your eyes on your mentor right now. The way I handle, the way I worship God in the inner squad. Fix your eyes the way I handle my, am I, am I yelling at my wife? Am I arguing with my wife? Am I, am I embarrassing my children? Am I, am I, am I, am I quick to be offended? Am I checking out the women? Am I mad dogging the dudes? No. It's very important that in our inner squad, we also have revival direct. He's saying, mark these people, mark me, your mentor, direct your attention, be imitators. The way I, I treat you with honor, the way that I treat you with respect, because you are also, see, I'm going to, I'm going to push for God as long as I can, but there comes a time that battle axe, pastor Robert has to die of self and fade off into the sunset. And then it's up to the new school to take over. I'm just going to lead you and guide you as long as I can under the anointing of God before God has a different assignment for me before God takes me away somewhere else. To, to raise up new people, but for right now, be imitators of me and check out my pattern, how I worship God and I deal with my people. It says, mark them which walk. I, I want you to see how we live. Pay attention to the opportunities I'm, I'm trying to talk to you about opportunities. I'm trying to share about opportunities that God has placed on my heart. That's why we're having this meeting, but we can't do that if you're on the phone. There's millions of opportunities. I'm getting ready to do something with Coca-Cola, but I can't impart that information to you that something that'll be able to be beneficial financially so you can tithe, so that you can tip, so that you can pay for other people's meals. I'm about to get signed to Coca-Cola but you will never understand that opportunity because you're not honoring and respecting and you're not coming with an attitude to have revival with our inner squad. You're not fixing your attention on the proper protocol of mentorship. God has opportunities. Fix your attention on how your mentors and your pastors live and behave and conduct themselves and carry themselves. It says, walk so as you have us for an ensample. You have us as an ensample, men worthy of imitation. I used to, I used to see people preach like T.D. Jakes. And they used to put their hand on their side and they used to do their hand like T.D. Jakes. 
I used to see ministers try to preach like Kenneth Copeland. And I used to be like, why are these people imitating these people? But that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to imitate our, 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 our mentors, the way they handle the people, the way, the way when we have meetings of lunch together, the way they handle the waitress and the waiter, the way they, they talk kindly to, to their wives, to their children. Pattern, even a manner of writing, guys. <clears throat> I have a certain way of, that I like to write. The way I, I love, I have a certain way to preach. I have a certain way to 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 declare and proclaim. But I also have a way of writing. And and are you paying attention to how your mentor writes? Are you are you do you have a mentor? And then if you do have a mentor, do you pay attention how they write? Are you writing like that? It, God wants us to do all this stuff. An utterance. What is an utterance? Um, are we paying attention to, to how our mentors speak and their statements and their comments and their observations? They're actually listening to you. They're giving you an ear. Do you, do you in our inner squad, are you truly observing or are you on the phone? Are you arguing with your wife, with your husband? Or are you looking at the same way you get pumped up to preach at that revival that's all packed out? The same way, blessings to all of our Navajo nations out there. The same way you get excited and, and you fast and you pray and, 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 and you get all the prayer warriors and intercessors to to, to pray for you for revival when you go to that tent meeting. Are you just as excited when you mentor the two people or the one person? Are, are you open to observe observations and declarations and expressions of God? The way you deliver your speech tonight, guys. Tonight is our Tuesday night SOG crew Bible study. Be an example to your team. We're going to get into it. It's going to get so good, guys. And I pray that you, you stick around because God has a word for you. God is going to, we're going to be talking about the sons of the prophets or the school of prophets. See, a lot of us, we want to get into ministry to raise people up from the dead. We want to get into ministry to lay hands on the sick so that they recover a lot of us want to get in there so we could preach as an as an with the utterance and and with by the filled with the holy ghost we want to speak with revelations that so that people's eyes are they're liberated and they they're enlightened with the revelations of just the words the gospel alone we we want to share a testimonial that we came from the gutters we started from the bottom and now we're here and we're still going and ascending and going to the holy hills we want to talk about this stuff but who's talking about the anointing for the inner squad, for the sons of the prophets or the school of prophets, the ones that are with you on that road, the ones that are with you through the, through the good and the bad. I see you, Miss Sophia, my childhood friend. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Second Thessalonians 3.9, pay attention. Before, right after this word, it's going to get amazing. Pay attention. He says, not because we have not power. What is power, guys? The liberty to do as one pleases. The right and privilege. I could command and people must obey. Paul saying, I have that kind of power that that if I was in the world, people would have to obey me. He says, I have judicial, I, I have, ju I make judicial decisions, power to make, <clears throat> I'm a leader of leaders. 
I control domestic affairs of families. I'm a spokesperson. I have power and authority. See, see, I could be the type of man that, wait a minute, I have power over my wife. Woman, wash those dishes and clean that house. And you better not, don't answer that. Tell if I could be like that, like anybody else. I could force people. I have delegated influence. I'm a chairman of a national party. I have delegated influence. I, I know who I am. I was raised to have strength. My dad was Ooh, my dad was powerful growing up. He was he was violent. He, right away, we were we were at places and we turn around and my dad's fighting people, kicking them in the face. So I understand what strength is. He says, not because we have not power. Wait a minute. I have the power to do as I please. I could do whatever Paul says. I could do whatever I want to do. Don't you understand? I was raised under Gamaliel. I was raised under the, the mightiest teacher, the legendary teacher. I could do so much. I have delegated. I have I can make judicial decisions. I could do so much. I, I could speak and people have to obey. But to make ourselves an example, I have that power. Yes, and you have that power to be to be wild, strong. You have that power to say, hey, I'm the leader of this family. Woman, you must submit. We have that power. But I've chosen instead of operating and being activated in that power, I'd rather make myself gentle to my inner squad. I'd rather be loving and romantic. I'd rather be a gentleman because God raised me up from the dead. But to make, what does it mean to make? I give myself, I commit myself to God. The way I speak, the way I preach, the way I write, the way I want people to see me religiously, I don't want them to see me as battle axe, the one that fights everybody. No. I'm a very strong person of authority. But I want my inner team to see me as somebody that truly loves God with all of my heart. That I literally have dedicated my life to putting others above myself. I want my inner team. He, Paul says, "Not it's not that I don't have power. I have power. I'm somebody. Rodney Head from Oregon. I'm somebody. You're somebody. We are, we are leaders of leaders. But I've been appointed to this office. I've been called by God. I've returned back to my first love. To make ourselves an example. To make myself an example in, in, in my style, in my resemblance. When you see me, I pray my prayer is, I just want you to experience Jesus. I know I could get wild at the revivals. I, I like to stage dive at our concerts. I go off. I go off. I got a lot of energy at our concerts. But my inner team, I, I, I want to resemble a loving friend. I want to resemble a true Christian. An example unto you to follow us. I want you to imitate. People came into my life and they found me. And they loved me. I was wild. I didn't have nothing. 
and I imitated them. And I believed them. And I listened to every word. I listened to every scripture. My prayer is that you just, that I would get to a place where you would imitate a true Christian. That's it. I don't want money. I just am called to mentor people and love people. Get ready, guys. Now we're getting into the, we're going to dive in. We're going to dive in very heavy right now. Get ready, guys. Get ready, get ready, get ready. The sons of the prophets, it talks about in the Bible, the sons of the prophets or the school of the prophets. See, everybody wants to do the the the, the raising up the Lazarus. Everybody wants to raise up Lazarus type ministry. They want... They, 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 the new school, uh, they don't even say Jesus. They say, hey, guys, I got a million streams on my on my social media. They won't, before they even glorify Jesus, they'll tell you their, their data. God is saying, are, are you willing to back off from the, the crowds? Are, are you willing to stop touring, Robert Ornelas? So that you can raise up a school of the prophets, so that you can raise up the sons of the prophets, so that you can raise up that the two, the two people. Miss Yvette, are, are you willing to, to stop performing in Riverside to raise up the two? When I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to say. When your world turns upside down, when your life it goes crazy and nothing makes sense, go back to your pastor, go back to your mentor, go back to those people that 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 loved you. They might have just bought you a cup of coffee and, and spoke life over you. First Samuel chapter 19. We're going to be talking about, last week we talked about Samuel. Today we're going to be talking about Samuel and David. Pay attention. This actually might help you. 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 18. To all of our people from Australia, to all of our people from India and around the world, we welcome you to our Tuesday night Bible study. We, we've We've ministered to the masses faithfully for over two decades. But are, are we willing to minister to that one Ethiopian man that doesn't understand the word? 1 Samuel 19, verse 18, it says, So David fled. There's going to be a season, guys, that you might have to flee that you might be chased and you might have to escape, escape for your life. I, I wish that I didn't have to tell you that. I wish, I wish I didn't tell you that. I wish that we were in a world where I didn't have to tell you that. But the reality is there might be a time and a season where you might have to flee from being chased and you might have to escape for your life. And what that means is, it's to give birth to, the Hebrew says, to give birth. Do you understand that when you are about to give birth to something new, to a new ministry, to a new vision, the enemy gets so mad and wages war literally against you straight on, is after you, targets you like never before. So you might have to escape. When you come up with that new vision, if you remember in the Bible, Joseph in the Bible, he told his brothers about a dream. He said, man, I had this dream. And all of a sudden, his brothers got so mad at him and they waged war. They, they put him in a pit. They sold him as a slave, guys. Some of you right now, you know you have that new vision. 
You know you have that new baby coming out. And all of a sudden, your life is turning upside down. It says David fled and escaped. He was being chased by Saul for no reason, for being a good boy. He was a good boy. He defended Israel against the giant and the Philistines. He was a good boy. He was a good boy. It says he fled and he escaped and he came to Samuel. What does Samuel mean? The word Samuel means L. It means might. It means strength and power. Sometimes you need to just run and just go back to your mentors. I, I know a lot of you know the word. I know a lot of you, you got scripture in you. A lot of you, you're very anointed. But when you got that new vision and, and, and everybody sees it, it, it gets so heavy. You have to run so that that baby has a chance to live. You have to go to the leaders that got might, the leaders that have power, the leaders that have strength. He came to Samuel to Rama. If if you if you read the Psalms it always says the song of degrees. You, you got to go higher. Sometimes you can't sit in that valley. The, you can't sit. A lot of people are dying. They sat in that valley and they couldn't get the strength to come out. You have to go to Rama. You got to go and sit on the holy hills of God to catch that vision, to get that dream. To cry out to God and sing your songs of, for Jesus. And he told Samuel all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naoth. What is Naoth? What does Naoth mean? Naoth is the habitation and the dwelling place of prophets. Sometimes... You, you need to get around some your, your, your inner squad. If nothing's working, if you're going to church and you and it seems like you're coming out worse. Pastors, if you could hear my voice, if you're still going to church and you're coming out worse, and you're still frustrated, go back to your inner squad. Esther, go back to your inner squad. Go back to the place where they're going to edify you and they're going to speak life over you and they're going to hug you and they're going to love you. Verse 19. And it was told to Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. He, he's with the, the squad of prophets. He's with the school of prophets up in the holy hills. Can you believe this guy? Verse 20, and Saul sent messengers. Remember last week we talked about the herald. He sent his herald. Saul sent messengers to take David. He sent a messenger. What is a messenger? A representative to, to move and flow. He sent messengers that flow like kings. They have the, the authority. They are like ambassadors. They are ambassadors like, like priests and prophets. They are teachers. They know the constitution. They know the laws. They know the scriptures. You can't just talk them out of it. These people understand the customs, the protocols, they know everything in the word of God. They know everything in the constitution. He sent his messengers to get David. To take him. He sent his, his messengers to take him to take in marriage. That's why a lot of people. 
That's why a lot of people, somebody will talk you into something and it's like you can't get out of it. They they talk you in and you feel obligated. They, they, they swindle you and they talk you into marriage. They talk you into that covenant. They, they, they hey, I'm going to come get you. And deep down, you know, you don't want to go. And, they're, and you're like, man, I have no choice. I got to go. These messengers and these ambassadors and the and Saul's heralds and these priests and these teachers that understood the laws and the, the constitution and the word, they understood the, the statutes, they understood it all. They went to, to take him. But when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, they saw all of a sudden the power. Do you understand as a mentor, Samuel had the power. They had a vision. They experienced something else. They became seers. When they saw the company, when they saw the gathering of these prophets, sometimes it... it you got to get around just a few people. You got to get around your inner squad and you got to just cry and you got to sing and you got to pray and you got to love God and you just got to sit there and, and who cares about songs? Who cares about if it sounds good? Who cares if you hit the right key? Who cares? Just get around your inner squad so that you could get that anointing so that you could get refreshed. Sometimes you go into the church, you go to the revival and you feel all alone. Sometimes you come out a little bit worse. You come out uh, anxious. You come out with anxieties. But when you get with your mentorship, when you get with your pastor, when you get with the people around you, your inner squadron, when you get around your gathering of the prophets, of the sons of prophets that understand they have a mentor, they have a leader. The company of prophets, what does it mean in Hebrew? They, they got around a, 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 a gathering of spokesmen, people that they were inspired by the spirit of God. I love being around my team. Because every single member of my team is inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's time that we remember that. That's why God brought us together. So we could be that, that gathering, that school of prophets, sitting on the holy hills, singing when nobody's around, singing when we're on tour to New Mexico, singing when we're on our way to the White Mountain Apache, singing our songs when we're on our way to the Navajo Nation, singing our songs when we're flying out to Alaska, singing our songs. Prophesying under the influence of the Spirit of God. It says, and Samuel, remember Samuel, his name means L. It means might, strength, and power of God. It says, and Samuel standing, the, the messengers and these ambassadors and these, the, these people that operated as the same power as a king saw, they, they, they went with the motive to take David by force and to marry him. I'm going to take you whether you like it or not. I'll have the power of the king. I'm going to take you. The enemy has the power. The enemy thinks he has the power to take you. But when they, those ambassadors saw, those messengers saw the company of the prophets prophesying, not only that, but they saw the mentor Samuel in strength with his shoulders back and his head held high, standing and enduring during the good, standing during when the country's at war with an attitude of service. See, a lot of people, why it doesn't work is because the mentor, the pastor will stand over that small inner group like, like, like somebody that 
causes people by force, makes forcefully makes them serve. But we as mentors, as leaders of leaders, we have to stand over our team and we have to serve our team. For years, they've always given me hotel rooms when I go and minister. But I never sleep on the bed because I don't want to. I don't feel right because I want my team to be comfortable. I try not to let my team drive because I want them to be comfortable. And I have an attitude to serve my team. I don't want them to buy no meal. I don't want them to put gas in, in our car. Samuel was standing as appointed over them. He was, he was standing as, as he was serving them. He was a person of strength. He was a person of power, but he chose to be a servant over his team. As an officer, somebody that is sharp, that sharpens his team. I know I'm the leader. I know I'm the one that's going to preach tonight. But I want to sharpen you. I want you to be comfortable. I, I want you to stand. It says the spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul and they also prophesied. They, they were like, what is going on here? We came here with, with the agenda to take David. I see you. I see you, Clyde Rivers. Like Samuel, like Elijah over the school of the prophets. You are like you are Elijah and I am Elisha. Like everybody wants to raise the dead but they don't want to be a servant over the sons of the prophets. And when it was told And when it was told Saul he sent other messengers and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time. And they prophesied also. I have one of my mentors on here. And, and, and he found me when I was young. And he never controlled me. He never forced me. But he stood over us, appointed over us. In strength and in service. And that's why we are who we are today. And that's why he is who he is today. And today he is a king of a nation and a I don't call him Prophet Rivers no more. I don't I don't call him Pastor no more. I call him His Excellency. This word is real. Verse 22. Then went he also to Ramah and came to a great wall that is in Shechem, and he asked and said, where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at Naoth and Ramah. And he went there to Naoth and Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon Saul, King Saul. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth and Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner. And he lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, is Samuel also among the prophets? He prophesied before Samuel in like manner. All of a sudden, 
he went from being immoral and being unethical and being disrespectful and dishonorable, talking about a king of a nation, to all of a sudden, when, when he got around the anointing, when he got around that person who was of great strength, who was a servant to his own team, who he served his own team, all of a sudden, he got convicted and he did the same thing in like manner and resembled. He wanted to be like Samuel in harmony, in correctness. Tonight, we're not sharing on being an example to the masses. Tonight, we want to encourage you to be an example to your crew, to the people around you. It might just be Robin. It just might be Dr. Robin Lococo. It just might be a few. Tonight, if you've been on fire in the masses, but when it comes to your small intercessory group or your Bible study, and you're not on fire for your Bible study, your cell group, your small little team, it's time that we, we, we reflect. It's time that we think about it. It's time that we catch fire for that one. It's time that we catch fire for that few. I, I want to just share before we leave about the prophet Elisha real quick. God tells Elijah, this famous prophet, he goes, I want you to go and anoint a king of Israel and a king for Judah. But I also want you to anoint a young man and throw your mantle on him because he's going to take your place, your room, your position, your office. He anoints him. Elijah finds that prophet named Elisha. And he throws it and he anoints him. And he goes to his family. It says in 1 Kings chapter 19, 21. And he returned back from him, talking about Elisha. And he took a, a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen. And he gave unto the people and they did eat. Then it says, now pay attention. It says, Elisha, then he arose. The word in Hebrew is he became powerful, just like all of us. Just like when Clyde, King Clyde Rivers came into my life, I became powerful. I became confirmed. I became full of strength and beauty and the ability to get the job done. But pay attention. It says he arose. And then it says he went after Elijah. You know what? I am full of power, but I choose to follow you. And he ministered unto him. He became his, serv his servant. So pay attention. God wants to raise some people up to be powerful. So that you could defeat the lion and the bear with your bare hands. So that you could chop off the head of the giant. So that you could lead and be a commander of armies. But he also wants you to be gentle, so powerful, and you understand that you're so powerful that instead of being powerful, you use that power and that ability to serve your man of God in humility in the back row to be the sound man. 
to take out the trash. So powerful because your time is going to come. He ra- he raises us up from the dead in strength and power and beauty and ability to get it done, to win the Super Bowl, to win that championship. And we know it. But I choose to follow the man of God and shut my mouth. Because I don't know it all. And I choose to serve the man of God. Now pay attention. I'm going to end right here. Elijah is getting ready to go up and ascend and go to his next, the next thing that God has for him. And every town that they would go, the sons of the prophets would tell Elisha, hey, don't you know that your, your master's going to leave us? Trying to discourage him. But you have to have that attitude like, nah, man, I'm going to follow my man of God to the end until my assignment is up. I'm going to follow my man of God until he goes to the next level. I'm going to follow my man of God until he goes up in that whirlwind and dances with God. Second Kings chapter two, verse 15. Elijah tells Elisha, I'm about to leave. Ask whatever you want. And if I can, I'll give it to you. Elisha, the the son, the minister, tells his master, I I want a double portion of what you got. I I want a double experience of of what you've experienced. I want a double portion of, of how you flow and operate in your utterance and how you write and how you train. I I want a double portion of your courage. He said, I, you know, what you're asking, it, it's very difficult. But if you see me go up, it is yours. If you see me go to my next level, if you see God promote me publicly, it will be yours. Immediately, the whirlwind came and the chariots of fire and it took his master and the mantle fell and he picked it up from the ground. He walks over to the Jordan River and he strikes the river with the mantle and the mantle and the river parts and he walks on dry ground across and the sons of prophets they they, they saw the whole thing 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 15 and when the sons of the prophets when the school of prophets which were to view at Jericho, saw him. They said, the spirit of Elijah does rest on Elisha. It says, and they came to meet him. They came to help him. The Hebrew says, they came to be friendly. A lot of us, we want everybody to be friendly with us. We want everybody to help us. But that united help will not never come unless we honor our leaders and our mentors and and we serve them until they advance to the next level. It's not about us. It's about our mentors. It's about the leaders that God places in our lives. We are full of strength and power. But even with all the 
the ability, even with all the beauty and the strength and our talents, we will never cross to the other side unless we stick around and we minister and serve a man or a person of God. And it's right there that the school, the school of prophets, the school of leaders, the school of spokespeople, the school of people that are inspired by the Holy Ghost, they will come to meet you and help you and be resourceful to you and help your ministry. And it says, and they bowed themselves down to the ground before him. That means they, they gave him homage, a special honor and recognition publicly by being faithful. By being faithful to your, your man of God. God will give you the office and the opportunity to lead a school of prophets, a school of inspired people that can get the job done, but you are the glue, you are the office, you are the deputy. I don't know who this word is for, I, I, this word for me. Like I said, blessings to all of our people from Australia and India. Page Pete from Alaska. It's a blessing to be on fire publicly. It, it's such a blessing to, to be able to speak and utter words and, and prophesy and share revelations and where people's eyes are opened up. It's a blessing to pray for those that have cancer and they recover, those that have diabetes, those that are on the verge of, of, of losing their minds, and to pray for them and for salvations to take place. It's such a beautiful thing. But are, are we willing to, to be the deputy and office holder over a few? Your inner squad. Your inner team. I love you guys out there. Jesus loves you guys. Praise you, mighty God. We love you, mighty God. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Scotty Baker says, true servant's heart and tears, amen. I let mine flow and feel better. Thanks for this message, for dealing few things medically in God's hands. Servants of service. Amen. Miss Cynthia. Amen. Hallelujah. That's awesome to be a blessing unto others. And in return, God will open up the floodgates. Amen. And pour out a blessing. You have no room to contain. Page P from Alaska. I love you guys too. So blessed to have the testimony of SOG crew leading my dad to Christ and praying over his deliverance from alcoholism. God is faithful to his people. 
as they trust in him. It was a blessing to lead your dad to the Lord at Mentasta Lake Village on the river. Huge honor. Elvia Wilson from Kingman, Arizona. She said, know that you do not stand alone. She said, brother, love you and your beautiful wife and family. God is good, Elvia. I uh, I shared a picture of you. I'm gonna see if I can find it real quick. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, mighty God. We praise you, Jesus. Praise you, mighty God. We love you. I found it. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for Miss Elvia. And I thank you, God, that she didn't freak out when I was running for Congress in Alaska, mighty God, under the pressure of dealing with governments tribal governments, rumors of wars with Russia, dealing with the media, dealing with the Airbnb, studying the history and the museums and touring. But I'm grateful, mighty God, that she was able to experience you, O oh Lord, when we were a small group, mighty God. When we went for that long walk in Anchorage to worship you, mighty God. We didn't go out there to party. We went out there to do kingdom business and community business, mighty God. And when we had free time, we used that free time to worship you, mighty God. I thank you, mighty God, for the opportunity to be an example, an end sample to our small little group, mighty God. I love you guys out there. Jesus loves you. I pray that you have an amazing rest of the week. Just like Elisha says he arose, meaning he became powerful. Tonight, I pray that you arise and I pray that you shine. I pray, I really do pray that you stand up, that you, this, that this power, that you would be empowered. This, this new anointing, this. This new birth of something new that no man has ever seen before. But as you arise and shine, as you prepare, as you prepare with your strength, that you would follow those that God tells you to follow. And that you would serve. Keep on going and never give up. Amen, Esther. I love you. Tell your mom I love her. I love your brothers, your sisters, and your sister-in-law, your nephews, your congregation, and your community of Upland, California, and the entire Nazarene movement, and the entire Nazarene Spanish movement.
Miss Cassandra, blessings to you and all your, your family, your children, the entire Navajo Nation. And I know it gets gets hard. But don't flee and escape to something that don't flee and escape to to something worse. Flee and escape to a mentor, to a pastor, to a person that's going to love you and honor you and allow you to be a spokesperson and allow you to freely serve others as they stand over as they stand over you not in force but stand over you with an, an attitude of servanthood to all those out there that have, you know if you see me with my family I, I pray that you that you've been ministered by my preaching, the leading of the Holy Spirit, but I pray that that you also been ministered by the way I am with my wife and the way she is with me and the way we are as a family. That that's that's gospel. That's ministry. Kenny and Sochi say, thank you, Melissa Evans Ornelas, for your mentoring and love for us. Amen. Okay, Thrizzle. XO, XO, baby girl. You can see them on the Battle Axe Spotify playlist, Gospel Music, Volume 1. Check them out. We love you guys. I, I, I went over too long, but... Jesus loves you. Esther Escobedo says, love you, sis. Melissa Evans Ornelas. On behalf of the entire SOG crew, to my mentor, the Honorable, His Excellency, Dr. Clyde Rivers, one of the originators, one of the original mentors. Thank you, brother. Thank you, apostle, prophet, pastor, king. To one of my childhood best friends, Leonard, Luna, and Amida, Luna. He says, amen, my brother. Thank you for your faithfulness in Christ. We love you guys out there. Blessings to all the people from Australia. We pray that you come back. We pray that that God blesses your beautiful families in Australia. Keep us in prayer here in North America. I'm from a city called Anaheim, California. If you could lift us up, my beautiful wife and my children and our friends, our partners, my buddy Lenny Luna, Esther Estogobito from Upland, California, Elvia Wilson from Kingman, Arizona, Kenny and Sochi from Anaheim, California, Miss Paige Pete from Copper Center, Alaska, Rodney Head from the Klamath Falls, Oregon area. Miss Sandra Goodman, Goodwin from Alamosa, Colorado, up in the valley. And all of our partners, keep us in prayer. We love you guys. Jesus loves you. Amen. <laughs>